Hey everybody, welcome back to Time Value Videos. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pull in the statistics, the key statistics from Yahoo Finance um, that outline a bunch of the really interesting stuff about stocks. So you can get the profit margins, you get their PE ratios, their market cap, and uh, ROA and ROE, you can get all kinds of stuff. All these really important uh, figures and numbers about different stocks. All you have to do is put in AAPL or MSFT or GOOGL. -G Home Depot, whatever stocks you want, you put them all in there, hit get data, and it's going to automatically pull in all the data you want. So you give it a second to run. There you go. And so now it's got all the data we need, um, and we can compare different stocks to each other. So Apple, Microsoft, Google are kind of competitors, and so you can look to see if you're trying to trade one over the other. Um, you can see which one you might want to be long or short or holding or whatever you want to do with them. So I'm going to show you how to make this. It's Pretty straightforward and not too difficult at all to do. All right, so for this video, I went ahead and did a little split screen so you can see Yahoo Finance on one side and you can see Microsoft Excel on the other. And that way, when I'm going back and forth between them, uh, it's just easy to kind of keep track. I don't have to keep minimizing and opening other windows. So we have Yahoo Finance right here. Um, all I did was search for a stock. You can pull any stock you want. I always use Microsoft as my example just because it's convenient. Um, and so I pulled up Microsoft under Yahoo Finance. And then I went and just clicked on the statistics tab so you can have all the data right here. This is all the data that we're going to pull in. Um, you can see we got our trading information and our valuations. We got some financials. We got their dividends. Got all the stuff that we need. So really all we actually need from this is the URL where this data is located because we're going to pull it from the internet anyway. So we don't actually need to see all this stuff right now because we're going to be importing it into Excel. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click up here and copy it. You can do control C, uh, but I want to make it really clear what I'm doing. So I right click and copy. Uh, I'm going to go back to Excel, and so we'll have that available to paste in a minute, but I first want to just create the layout of the data that we're going to be getting. So um, in Sheets 1, in the first cell, I'm just going to put tickers, and then I'm going to lay out some tickers, and so we can go Google, uh, we already have Microsoft, but we'll put that in there, um, Apple, and we can do Home Depot and Lowe's, um, and then we can do Target and Walmart too, just for, and Caterpillar. It doesn't matter, you can put as many stocks as you want. We're going to make it expandable, so if you just put in like two stocks, um, like if it was just like that, uh, it'll work for just two, or if you wanted to go in and fill in as many as you wanted, it'll just go for as many stocks as you want. We're going to set it up so it'll just keep, keep going. Um, so that's kind of our outline right now. Um, that's all we kind of need. The rest going down is going to fill in in just a minute. Um, so let's go ahead and open Visual Basic, and I just have it set up so it'll open on the other side so you can see both at the same time. So inside Visual Basic, it comes up as gray, so I'm going to hit Control R, and that's going to open my project window. I'm going to double click on this workbook, and that'll open where I can actually edit my VBA. Um, and so I'll just get rid of that window now that I don't need it. And then so in here, I'm going to do sub, and I'm going to call this uh, fundamentals. And then give myself some room. I hit enter a bunch of times. So now we have room to actually write some stuff in here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is, uh, in order to cycle through all of these tickers, we're going to need a for loop. Uh, for loop is just the easiest, uh, for me anyway. It's most convenient. I like to use for loops. There's a while loop also, but I just don't use it that often. So for, and then you can give any variable you want. I just like to use n or i. So I'm going to put i for i equals. And now we're going to go, we're going to cycle through column b. We're going to start at b, and we're going to keep going until we get to the end. And that end could be as immediate as c, or it could go all the way out to i, or it can go, you know, keep going out as far as we want it to. Um, but we're going to just, for this case, we need it to start at B and we need to just go until we get to the end of our list. And so column B is the second column, so I'm going to say 2. So we're going to start at I equals 2 because that will be column B and then go until, go 2, and then we'll start at, um, in order to figure out what the last row is, we're going to say start at cell 1, which is A1, and then just go all the way right and just keep going all the way right until you get to the end. And the code to do that is uh, we'll say sheets one because we're on sheet one dot cells one one and that says column a and row one um, dot end and so go to the end xl to right and then so that's saying start at cell one one and sheet one and go all the way to the right go to the end on the right I could say xl down and I'll say go to the end downward but there's nothing downward so we're just gonna say go to the right. So end XL to right, and then what do we want when we get there? We want to know what column that we are in, so dot column. And we hit enter, and you can see it capitalized all that stuff, so we know that we uh, had it entered in the correct way. And then anytime you have a for loop, at the end you have to have a uh, next, and then whatever variable you used, and so I used I, so I'm going to say next I. If you said you know next ticker, then you just have 
if you had like ticker up here, you could say for ticker ticker equals two to that. But I'm going to use the variable ticker later, so I don't want to use it now. I'm going to use it um, actually next. It says after so once i cycles through from two to the end, whatever that happens to be. In this case, it's i, which is nine. So from two to nine, we're going to go. Uh, the ticker that we're going to be using is going to be in whatever cell. It's going to be in row one the whole time, but it's going to be a different column each time we do it. So we're going to say equals sheets one. And I'm using sheets before all of my cell references because I'm actually going to use the sheet two later on in this in this uh, workbook. So I'm referencing sheet one every time that I reference a cell because later on if I say um, cells one one, but I mean in sheet two, then it's going to mess up if I'm not on the right sheet. So I'm going to say sheets one dot cells, and then I'm going to, in this case, we're assigning the value of ticker. So ticker is going to be uh, sheets one, and then row one, so cells one, comma, and then what column are we going to be in? Well, we're going to be in whatever column I is currently, oops, whatever column I is currently representing. So we're saying one, comma, I, and then that's it actually. So ticker will be sheets one, cells one, I. So whatever. I is going to be our column, so that's our row, that's our column, so it's going to fill in as we go. And if I just did, I'm going to do, I'll show you real quick, I'm going to hit control G, and that'll bring up this immediate window at the bottom, and right here I'm going to do debug.print ticker, and then if I run this, you'll see it goes through and it just gets all of the tickers for us. So now we have all the tickers um, at this point, and now we just need to use the URL that we pulled from Yahoo Finance to pull in the data for the tickers. And I'm going to have it pull into sheet, sheet 2 so that all the data is here and we can just move it over to paste it into here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to say the QURL, you can, this is another variable, you can make it any variable you want, but it's going to be our query URL, so I'm going to actually call it QURL because it's easy to know, to like remember what that means, and then I'm going to hit control V and that's going to paste all the data that we got from Yahoo Finance, well not the data, it's going to paste the URL, but that's the reference for the data that we're going to be pulling in. And it needs to be a string, so I'm going to put quotes around it. So now they have QURL, that's our, our variable, is going to be this string, and that's the URL that we're going to be pulling from. But we need to make sure that we're not always pulling Microsoft data. So we're going to replace the instance of Microsoft here and Microsoft here with whatever ticker we're using. So in order to, do, in order to insert a variable into a string, you do quote and and quote, and then between those ands, you can put a couple spaces, and I'm going to put ticker. Then we go scroll all the way over to where Microsoft is the second time. I'm going to delete MSFT, I'm going to put quote, and, and, quote, and then between those ands, I'll just put ticker again. And so that's how you insert a variable into a string, is by doing quote, and, and then the variable, and then, and, quote. And so what it's doing is, this first quote is closing this string off, so you can see there's a string, and, ticker, and, and then opening a new string, and the next ticker, and then it's opening and closing a new string immediately. Um, sometimes you can leave this off completely and just end it with that. Um, but I like to, just for absolute clarity, I like to have both on there. So now we have the URL that we're going to be pulling from, and now we just need to say pull from that URL. So we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to want to pull it into sheet two. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to go sheets two dot select. And usually adding a dot select line in uh, VBA code is a little extra that you don't necessarily need. But in this case, in order to pull that data in with a query table, uh, we're going to need to specifically say, go to sheet two, uh, because we want to import that data to sheet two. And if we don't say go to sheet two and we try to import it directly to it without going there first, it's not going to work. So now I'm going to do with, and then the to pull in from the from a URL, we're going to do with active sheet. And now we have sheets two dot selected. So um, we have active sheet dot Q U E R Y T A B L E S query tables dot add connection and then colon equals and then open the quotes because we're going to do a URL and then a semicolon and a close quotes and then we're going to do and and then we have the URL that we want Q U R L comma destination and now here's where we're going to put it so we need colon equals and then I, even though I already have sheets two selected I'm going to be really uh, specific here and do sheets two again dot range a1 so that everything gets put into a1 and then over here for connection I opened another uh, parenthesis so I'm just going to do an extra close parenthesis so there's two closes at the end and that's because there's an open here and then another one all the way through here so then I'm going to go ahead and click outside of it and you can see this went blue and these got capitalized and so I know that things are working out okay anytime I have a width I need to have an end width 
and see that goes blue when you click away from it. Um, and now between those, I just need to do some kind of cleanup. So I'm gonna do background, background, Q U E R Y query equals true, and then dot refresh background Q U E query, and then this one needs a colon equals false. And then I'll just get rid of these blank lines so it looks nice and clean. Great. So now we have our for loop, we have our URL, we go to sheet two, we import this data. Um, when we go to sheet two, let's go ahead and clear out what's already there because if we're importing a bunch of things over and over again, I just want to make sure that um, everything on it is clean. So I'm going to do after sheets two select, I'm going to do uh, cells.clear. Um, and actually, just to be absolute safe, let's go ahead and do sheets two.cells.clear. And that's I, you really d you definitely don't need that if you're already doing select and then the immediate next line is cells.clear but I just I'm trying to be as absolutely clear as possible here um, and then we have our width and that's gonna bring in the data so I'm gonna go ahead and put a stop line in there and I'm gonna show you what it looks like so I'm gonna run it and then we get stop so we get stopped right there and then on sheets 2 so sheets 1 still has all of our tickers sheets 2 has this is all the data for in this case this is Google right because we did the first one and sheet 1 is Google great so we have all the data for Google right here and so now we just need to say, take all of this data and go put it on Sheets 1. Before I do that though, I'm just gonna kinda highlight all this right here and do Control C. So I'm gonna copy all of the, these are the headings for everything. I'm gonna go back over here. Let's put, the, put them right there. Um, and they come in as a word wrap, so I'm just gonna go home. While it's all highlighted, I'm gonna click home and I'm gonna unwrap. And this is the word wrap, that's word wrap text right there. Uh, I'll make this big really quick so you can see. There, so wrap text, unwrap it, and then just make column A you know, the right size. So there, so now we have all the headings, so we didn't have to actually go write any code to pull those headings in. Um, now we just need to copy and paste these every time we run the macro. So I'll go back to minimizing that, um, and then we can go ahead and tell the code. So I'm gonna get rid of the stop, I'm gonna delete that, and I'm gonna stop running, I'm gonna hit the stop key up here, the reset. Um, and now we just need to fill in here and tell it at this point, copy everything right here, all these headings, over to sheet one, oops, over to sheet one under the appropriate ticker. And so I'm going to go over here, I'm going to say we're looking from B3 all the way through B69. And so to do that, we're just going to say, um, after our end, we're going to say sheets 2 dot range, and then in, for a range, because we're doing dot cells, then we do like one, in this case it would be like 3 comma 2, but for this, because we're doing a range, which a range encompasses multiple cells, right? So range, and then we want B3 in quotes, colon, which means through, B69, and then close the quotes, and close the parentheses, dot copy, right? So um, in this case, we're gonna be copying all of these. So what we're saying is sheets two, range B3 through 69, which is all of those, copy it, and then we're gonna go back over to sheets one. So we'll do sheets one dot select, and then we'll need to tell it, so we go back over to sheets one, and then over looking at sheets one, we're gonna need to be in whatever column we're in. So we're gonna say uh, cells, and then we need to, which row, we're always gonna start at row two, right? So wherever it's in, depending on whatever ticker it is, but we're gonna start at row two and we're gonna put it in there. So for cells two, two, comma, and then whatever column we're in is still I from our for loop, so we can just do two comma I, and that'll put us in whatever column, because I is gonna be our column in this case. And so uh, cells two comma I, and then close that, um, dot select, and then, so now we're gonna say, we already went over sheets two, we copied this, we went back here, we selected the right heading, whichever we're at, and then we selected it. So we did cells two, I select, and then we're gonna need to paste. And so paste, we do active sheet dot paste, paste, there we go. Um, and then whenever you did a copy, it's gonna do the little, here I'll show you. So if you highlight, and then if you copy this area, you get the little dancing ants thing that goes around it. And so we wanna turn that off. And to turn that off, normally you'd just hit escape if you were on your, your keyboard, but uh, in VBA you do cut copy mode equals false. And that says just turn off the dancing ants. Um, and then that should be all we need. So we went over and pasted it here. Um, and then if we run the whole thing, it should, should work. So I'm going to run it. If there's a problem, we'll just fix it when we get to it. So you can see it jumping around through the, the data as it does it. Um, and I have nine tickers to work through, actually eight. Uh, there we go. So I pulled them all in. Uh, I'm just going to highlight and resize them. So now we can see, I'll make this big too, since we already have the code done. So now for all of this data, looks like they're all different, so we know it didn't just run the same ticker over and over again. 
Um, so now we have a list of all of this information for all of these stocks. Apparently none of them have, oh, a Google has none of the uh, forward or trailing information on, oh, Google just doesn't have dividends. So that's pretty um, straightforward why that that's the case. But now we have all of this information here. So we can use this to compare multiple tickers. So if you want to put, you know, some competitors in there. We got Target and Walmart, and we got Home Depot and Lowe's. So those are some competitors. We also got Microsoft, Apple, and Google. Those are somewhat competitors as far as um, uh, computer products and stuff. So we can compare these to each other. We can see we can see between Home Depot and Lowe's um, their market cap. So Home Depot is a bigger company than Lowe's. And then uh, if we scroll down and get some profit margins, we can see that actually let's do this. Let's go highlight the first row and go to View and go Freeze Panes and then just freeze the top row. And then now if we scroll down, we can see Home Depot and Lowe's are competitors. So we'll just go ahead and do a box border around them so we can see everything between those. Is, so now it's really clear. So let's go ahead and look at, um, we've got the revenue. Uh, revenue. So we got Home Depot is uh, has a higher revenue than Lowe's. Um, revenue per share has still also higher. Um, quarterly revenue growth. So Home Depot is growing more than Lowe's is. So all interesting things to look at. Um, Home Depot also has more cash. Uh, operating cash flow is still higher. Uh, we got their beta. They got a pretty similar beta. 0.01 doesn't make too much of a difference when you're talking about beta. They probably move similarly to the uh, S&P. Um, but now we can go look at uh, average volume. So fairly e even, uh, about 400,000 more um, shares traded for lows than for Home Depot. Uh, that might have something to do with the price because the prices are different too. Um, but we can go ahead and look at all this different. We can compare any of these. Uh, I'll probably do a video where we actually look at some of these uh, fundamentals and actually like talk about how companies are run and how to compare them to each other. But this is just getting the information so you can do your own analysis on your own. Um, but I like to look at profit margin is probably a good place to start with. Profit margin on Home Depot is almost double what Lowe's is. So I'm, I mean, I'm feeling good about Home Depot just from this, uh, which is in no way scientific. So don't just take this information and say, oh, good, I need to buy them. But at least you can look at it and say, okay, here's a good kind of starting point and we can do some... Uh, more extensive research from here, but it's a good kind of jumping off point to get uh, more in-depth um, background information about, you know, the fundamentals of all these companies. So uh, anyway, that's how to pull in that data. Um, you can just change these all you want. I'll, you know, you get rid of the uh, the borders right there. And so you can change these stocks to whatever you want. Um, and you can, even if you delete them like that, um, then just put in new stocks and run, run the macro. If you wanted to do, um, go over to developer and do insert a button, you can do that over here and then connect it to that uh, that macro that we have. And you can even call it uh, get data. There you go. And then if you fill this in, I'll just do Apple and Microsoft real quick. And then you run it, you click on that, and then it pulled in the data. So now we can compare it here. Um, and we had all the data we want. You just fill it in with whatever you need, and then just clear it out when you're done, and you're good to go. So hopefully that's helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the comment section below, and I'll get on answering however however I can, or if, uh, if any of the awesome people that watch these videos are able to help too, that'd be very appreciated for uh, anybody who has any questions. So um, also, if you want to see a particular topic, um, feel free to comment below about what anything you want me to cover as far as uh, VBA or Excel or even just general finance topics. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. Early and you'd probably so like these ones too. Uh, kind of my first thought was to do an if then, so I could say uh, if the, the month the was puts on the right of and you can that make particular it, date was less than format, you can make um, 12 and it would be like the fourth quarter kind of thing.